get it? Those of you rushing, you poor darling, I so know what it's like when you're like trying to make your class on time and you're like, no, they're going to lock the doors. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I'm Claire, for those of you who don't know me. Um, today we're focusing on glutes, so it's the last week of glute focus and then we'll be next month moving on to back bends and thoracic spine mobility. So those of you who are not like me, I struggle with back bends, so we're going to be working on that next month. So yeah, enjoy the booty burn today. <laughs> uh, and uh, spiritually, we'll be focusing on swadaya, which is a Sanskrit word which means self-reflection. So those of you who came to my class last week, we spoke about the yamas, which was like the, the, when you're doing um, the rules around acting within a community. And then the niyamas, which is what we're focusing on today, one of those is around self-reflection. These are like the eight limbs of yoga. So how this relates to everyday life is that, or it, into your class today, when you're practicing, I want you to see if you can almost observe your own mind when you practice, because it's amazing what things come up and what your mind throws at you when you're practicing yoga. So when you're doing the strong poses, and you start getting into your head about what you're having for dinner, if you can self-reflect on that and try to bring yourself back into your body, that can be your objective for the class today or your goal, is to self-reflect on what's going on, whether you're even just feeling your body, whether you're observing your mind, whether you're focusing on your breath, just find that self-observation. Okay, so come down onto your backs. We'll start with some pranayama or yoga breathing. You're welcome to have your feet together and knees apart or knees TP'd together if your hips are a little more stiff or just straight if that feels more comfortable. And we'll take a big, deep, slow and steady breath in. And a slow and steady breath out. We'll start with some box breathing, so I'll count the breaths. To prepare, just take one more natural breath in. <clears throat> and a slow and steady natural breath out. We'll inhale for four, three, two, one. Hold for four, three, two, one. Exhale for four. Three, two, one. Hold for four. Inhale for five. Hold for five. Exhale for five. Hold for five. And now take the breath as feels natural for you. Maybe a little slower or a little faster. <clears throat> and see if you can embody that self-reflection. Paying attention to that breath. Or observing if the mind starts to wander. Staying still and resisting that urge to fidget. And just being with the sensation that is in the body in this moment. Taking your last breath wherever you are. And when you're ready, you can start to gently open the eyes and windscreen wipe the legs from side to side. <clears throat> and we'll start the class with core and glute work. 
so we can start to get strong through these stability areas of the body to support our practice for the rest of the class. So coming into an early back bend, so we're coming into bridge pose. If you tickle the backs of your heels, so you know you're in the right spot. And as you inhale and rise up, lift your hands up towards the roof. And if it feels okay, maybe the hands go all the way over the head and just hover on the floor or rest on the floor behind you. Take a breath in, exhale as you slowly come down. And now we follow that breath. So inhale, bring the hands up and overhead. And exhale, slowly lower down. Maybe close the eyes and take that reflection inward. So inhale, rising up. Exhale, lowering down. So matching that breath to movement, following what feels right with you. Maybe you speed up the breath or you slow it down. On your last exhale, instead of coming all the way down, keep your glutes up and just rest your hands on the floor for a moment. So we're staying in that bridge on your next exhale. Tick, make sure you can tickle the back of those heels. Then from here, left hand to roof and right hand gently pulls the left fingers back towards the face for wrist stretch. Start with pulses of the hips. So we're glutes pulsing towards the roof. Tilt that tailbone. Start to feel the glutes wake up. Taking it slow and steady with the pulses, so you're also staying slightly relaxed. Swap hands, so that right hand starts to stretch as the left hand pulls the fingers back towards the face. Keep that sensation of the quads slightly pulling together like there was a block between the thighs, so they stay engaged. Pushing the heels into the floor, maybe dragging them towards you if you want to work the hamstrings as well. Hold on the last one, extend to the roof, release the hands, and then slowly start to come down towards the floor. Bring the feet together, the balls of the feet together, the knees fall out towards the side. Inhale, we rise the hands up and then lift the hips up as well. If it's too much to have the hands come up over the head, keep the hands on the floor. And then exhale, we lower down. So round through the spine, so each vertebra comes down to the floor. Inhale, lift up, reach the hands over the head and exhale to lower down. Be mindful of the knees. If there's any pain, please don't lift the hands up. The stabilizer muscles will start to work. You might feel like you're shaking or rocking a little bit in the movement. That's absolutely normal. One more, wherever you are. And on the next exhale, bring the knees in towards the chest and place your hands on your knees and make little circles. You can have the knees going the same circles or you could send knees in opposite directions if you want to play with different sensation. A little rock and roll forward and back if that feels nice on your spine. Otherwise, meet me in tabletop position in any way that feels good for you. We'll start with a little cat cow. So inhale, belly drops, gaze up. And exhale, push the floor away, round through the back. Inhale, belly drops, gaze up, really stretching through that spine. Exhale, push the floor away and protract through those shoulders, chin to chest, gaze between the knees. Come back to neutral spine, coming into a twist. Inhale, reach the right hand tall and exhale underneath the body. Twisting, maybe even falling down, resting onto that shoulder. Closing the eyes and observing the body here. Pushing into that left hand, come back to center. Neutral spine, opposite side, lift the left hand up and exhale underneath the body, thread the needle. 
resting head and shoulder on the floor, maybe closing the eyes and focusing on the breath. Push into right hand, come back to centre. Tabletop position, we start to work on the glutes. So with this one, we want to avoid a back bend. So we're going to bring the ribs in and tilt the tailbone so the back is nice and strong and the core is engaged. Right foot points back towards the back of the mat and point it. So get rid of that back bend if it's there, tilting the tailbone and ribs in, we pulse. Pulse is just, so the heel's going up towards the roof and the toe is pointed. So rather than height, we're looking at length. So you wanna get nice and long through the top of the head to the back foot, rather than going high, which might take you into a back bend and dis disengage the core. Three, two, one, hold. Now we're gonna paint rainbows. So take that right foot down to the right side of the outside of the mat, bring it up like a rainbow and down towards the left. So this is using the glute on the outside of your booty, which is responsible for taking the leg out and over. And this is a movement that we don't do a lot in yoga, so I like to add them into my classes. <laughs> so if it feels a little different or weak, that's totally normal. If it's starting to burn, that's normal too. <laughs> Just smile, it all feels better. <laughs> we'll do one more on each side. And then take the foot back up like we started and we do little circles. So imagine you're drawing a circle from the, a down and around one direction, so clockwise. Make them small, keep that foot nice and strong, point through the foot. Sorry Ross, you just did Pilates, you must be dying after now. <laughs> it's the Pilates move. <laughs> we change the circle direction, so changing them the other way. So right about now the booty starts to really work. Subtle movements that really engage through the glute. Last one, then lower the knee. Come into a little child's pose for a moment. Take a breath, relax the forehead down. Now, if your lower back was hurting during any of those exercises, you'll have to just really remember to tilt that tailbone and keep the ribs in because I notice it in myself. If I don't remind myself, I feel my lower back. So let's come back up to tabletop and we'll do the other side. So left leg this time goes straight back. So ribs in, tailbone tucked, chin to chest. Let's do little pulses straight up. Keep that breath nice and long and steady. So the inhales and the exhales should be the same length and they should be nice and steady and relaxed. Three, two, one, hold at the top. Now we paint our rainbow. Take the foot out towards the left side, tap the floor, bring it up like you're painting a rainbow and over to the other side. Using that glute mean and glute min muscles that are often really quite weak in yogis, so might feel like a bit of a challenge or a weird movement for you. Beautiful breath, keep that up. Keep that self-reflection, the theme of the class on yourself if your mind starts to wander. One more on each side. Come back to center when you're done. Little circles. So we're doing circles that are clockwise, so out and up. Keep that toe pointed. Watch that belly, is it sagging? So tailbone in, ribs in, control. Make that circle smaller if you need to, if you're finding it's making you unstable. Change direction. Keep that breath. Last few circles. And done, lower the knees. Move the hands a bit further up, come to downward facing dog. Tuck the toes, push through the heels and pedal through the legs. So bend one, one knee and then straighten the other to feel into those hamstrings. In your down dog, if you do have tight hamstrings, you're welcome to keep your knees bent. I did for a very, very long time and I still do some days have very bent knees in my down dog and that is absolutely okay. Look between your hands and when you're ready, you can start to slowly walk, step or jump between the hands. Inhale to flat back, exhale to fold. 
Inhale, rise up, coming up to mountain pose. Reach tall through the hands and exhale to fold. Breath in, halfway lift. Breath out, hands to floor. Step or jump back into high plank. Stay here. So we'll do a few vinyasas to warm up. But with your planks, you're very welcome to bring your knees on the floor. It doesn't make you any less yogi. So for the first one, knees to the floor. We're going to be taking it slow. Bring the chest forward. Bring those elbows in tight to the body. Come down to 90 degrees and hold. So stop when your elbows are at 90 degrees. Beautiful. Keep holding. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, lower down to halfway for five, four, three, two, one. Hold at 90 degrees. Push back up. Last one. Five, four, three, two, one. Hold at 90 degrees and then come into upward facing dog or cobra if you wish. So you don't have to go the whole way to the floor if you don't want to. You can just go to 90 degrees in the elbows. Tuck toes, down dog, breath out. Look between hands, step jump or walk between hands. Inhale, flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, rise tall. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands to floor. Step or jump back, high plank. Move through your chaturanga, high to low. Breath in, upward facing dog. And breath out, downward facing dog. Pedal out three legs, take a breath. Connect back with yourself if the mind has started to wander. Look between the hands, step jump or walk between the hands. Inhale halfway, exhale fold. Inhale to rise, reach tall. Keep those ribs in, glutes engaged. Exhale to fold. Breath in halfway, beautiful breathing. Exhale to fold, step or jump back, high plank. Move through your vinyasa, high to low. Inhale up dog. And exhale into downward facing dog. Pedal out through legs. Nod or shake the head and release that jaw if you notice it is clenching. Close the eyes, take the attention inward self-reflecting on your body in this moment. Inhale, right leg rises. And exhale, step between the hands. Coming into lizard, so the hands come on the inside of that foot. Now you have the option to keep the back knee up for more fire, or if you want a small passive stretch, you can lower the knee. Stay here for just a few breaths. If you do use a pad, and you have sensitive knees, you can use it for the next move or use your mat. Come into your half split. So walk the hands back, breath out. If you have tight hamstrings, it's fine to have that knee bent. Just look towards over the top of your toe. Exhale, come back into your low lunge, lower the back knee. Left hand to floor, easy twist. Right hand lifts. Exhale, hand down, untuck that back toe, get strong into the legs, we come up into arrowhead. So take it slow, palms facing down, reach tall through the head. Again, bring the ribs in and tilt the tailbone if you have that back bend. Maybe extend the hands, get long. Chin to chest, keep breathing. And exhale, come up, crescent lunge. Fire lunges. Step in a little closer with your back foot for this one. We're going to bend deep into that front knee and lower it down to the floor and claw the air and bring your elbows down like you're pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades. Inhale up, exhale, come down. Breathing in and out through the nose. Inhale, rise, exhale, lunge like you're pulling the sky down. Inhale, reach, exhale, lunge. Inhale, reach, exhale down, hold for three, two, one. Hands to heart, inhale to lengthen and exhale to come into a twist. So we're twisting over towards the right side. 
You can straighten that back knee. You've all done that anyway. <laughs> You've got a couple of options here. You can stay as you are, or you can come into a little arm balance, which is staying in your twist. Can you raise that back foot up and balance? Just a little opportunity to have a little fly. You don't have to do it. You can stay in your normal twist. It's absolutely fine. And if you fall out, just come straight back in. Meet me back in twist. <laughs> and then we'll put the back foot down and open up into warrior two when you're ready. Gaze towards the front middle finger. Get deep into that front knee. Eagle arm. So right arm under, left arm over. And exhale, humble warrior. So we come down on the inside of the leg and fold forward. So this is a funny one when you first start. You have to have a little play with this. If it's too much to have the arms bound, just have the hands on the floor to support your weight. Last breath. Come up halfway, place the hands around the front foot and, and swivel into a lunge. Beautiful, step back, choose your flow. High to low plank, breath in, upward facing dog. And breath out. Downward facing dog. Pedal through legs, connecting to breath. Inhale, the left leg raises tall. Breath out, step between the hands. Coming into lizard lunge, the hands come inside the left foot, maybe onto the elbows, maybe you leave that back knee up or place it down for a more passive stretch. Breathing here, let the head and neck relax a little more. Maybe close those eyes. Using this class to check in on yourself. Either fold the mat over or take a pad for half splits. We fold back over that front leg, toes towards the roof to, to feel through the back of the left leg. Check your hips are not twisted. Often we find in this one, the hips are twisted, but you guys all look pretty straight. Good job. <laughs> Inhale, come back through your lunge. Right hand to floor, easy twist. Left hand rises, breath in. Relax neck and head. Maybe right ear relaxes to right shoulder. Exhale, bring the hand down, untuck the back toe. Get ready to come up into arrowhead. Breath in, arrowhead. Tilt tailbone, ribs in, get long through the crown of the head, chin to chest. If you want more, reach forward, get into extended arrowhead. Inhale, rise up into your lunge. Coming into fire lunges, step a little closer. So we want to bring that back knee straight down so we're using the glutes. Claw with the hands, ready? So we inhale up and exhale down. Inhale, rise. We're going to take a slow. Exhale, slowly with control. Inhale, rise. We slow the breath. We slow the movement. And you feel all those little muscles engaging. Last one. Hold it at the bottom. Two, one. Hands to heart. Straighten that back leg. Maybe get a little longer in the back foot. Inhale to lengthen, exhale to twist over towards the left. Hands can be in a fist or at prayer. If you want to have a little go at flying, keeping your hands as they are, maybe floating that back foot. Once you are done, I'll give you a couple more breaths. <laughs> Come back into your twist when you're finished. And we'll open up into warrior two. Check that that knee is over that front ankle, so you're nice and deep and working that quad. Eagle arm, so this time opposite. So left arm over, right arm, left arm under, right arm over, and then exhale, fold forward. Really making sure that you're pushing through the heel here so your glutes and your hips are working in that flexibility. If it does get too much, you can just lower the hands. One more breath. Exhale, hands come down on the floor, frame the front foot. Step back to plank. Choose your flow. 
Maybe you want to have a one-legged chaturanga, maybe chaturanga push-ups, maybe knees on floor. Inhale, up dog, and exhale, downward facing dog. We've got boys all in the front row today. <laughs> the boys in the front. <laughs> Pedaling out through legs. Inhale, the right, the right leg reaches tall. And exhale, knee to nose. So we're doming through the back, bringing it in. Knee could almost touch the nose. And inhale, rise up. Exhale, knee to left elbow or upper arm. Inhale to rise. Exhale, knee to right elbow or upper arm. Now, if you do have an arm balance, you can take it. So if you want to take scissors, you can take it. Otherwise, meet me back in three-legged dog. Exhale, knee to left elbow. And this time we straighten the leg for fallen triangle. Reach the left arm up. Maybe float the bottom foot to use that booty. Just an extra challenge. <laughs> One more breath. Exhale, left hand down. Push up is an option. Don't have to do it. If you want to, you can. Meet me back in three-legged dog. That's the one when I get a lot of faces. <laughs> like, are you freaking serious? <laughs> Exhale, step the foot forward. Get low through the legs. Get ready to come up into crescent lunge. So inhale to rise. We bend that back knee, sink low. And we'll do these nice and slow, these transitions. We're going to come up into stag. Inhale. And kick out the leg. So we'll inhale down. And we'll exhale up. <laughs> exhale and slowly kick out. Inhale, lower. Control, take it slow. Exhale, up. Find, find that drishti or point of focus. Let's do two more. Inhale, lower. Use that breath to guide you. Exhale, come up. Inhale, one more. Last one. You're doing great. The faces of concentration. <laughs> Inhale, come down into a lunge. Hold for a moment. And exhale, warrior two. Turn both your, so straighten both your legs. Turn your feet to the sides of the mat and then step up to the top. Well done, you made the first move. So this is the curtsy and the, the wide squat and curtsy lunge. So we're gonna lift the left foot, so hover it up. What we're looking for is abduction of the leg. So the leg going out to the side is using the side booty, which is what we want. So you extend the leg out, step it down, sumo squat, hands can be at prayer. Come up and then move your body weight over that right leg, then again, abduct, and then adduct, which is bringing the leg over and down into curtsy. This uses oh, nice arms. <laughs> Inhale, come back. So try that again, out, exhale down, Inhale, rise, beautiful. Bring it over and lower down, breath out. Come back to center, hover. Inhale, open. Exhale, squat down. Inhale, back to center. Exhale, curtsy lunge down. Let's do another one just like that. Inhale, out. Exhale, squat. Inhale, center. Exhale, curtsy. Beautiful, you guys are getting great at this one. <laughs> Back to center. Wide, step wide and fold over the thighs. So a wide leg fold forward. Feeling through the backs of those legs. Fine here to bend the knees, especially if there's tight hamstrings involved. Feet should be facing towards the side of the mat, so straight or slightly pigeon toed will help you here. Coming into a little twist, we'll bring the right hand to grab the left uh, ankle and just twist over gently to the side. Inhale through center and exhale the other way. So the left hand grabs the right ankle, so you're coming into a twist. And if it doesn't feel okay, just place one hand down to support you and just take it easy on your lower back. Inhale back to center. We'll bend through the knees and slowly start to roll up. Come back through a crescent lunge, breath in. And exhale, hands to floor. Step back and flow. Choose your option. It's okay to sit out this vinyasa if you want. And meet me back in down dog when you're ready. 
pedal out through legs, bending one knee and straightening the other. Can you release that jaw? What is going on in that self-reflection? What has been showing up for you in class today? Inhale, the left leg rises up. Exhale, knee to nose. Inhale, to rise. Exhale, knee to right elbow or upper arm. Inhale, to rise. Exhale, knee to left elbow or upper arm. Option to take your arm balance if you have one, if you would like. And then meet me back in three-legged dog when you're ready. Exhale, knee to right elbow or upper arm. Straighten the leg underneath. You fall and triangle, triangle right hand reaches tall. Maybe lift that bottom foot up to work on strength. Exhale, hand comes down. Maybe a push up, otherwise skip it and meet me in downward facing dog. Three-legged dog. And exhale, step between the hands, coming into a lunge, getting off those wrists. If the wrists are feeling a bit sore, it's quite normal. You can um, give your wrists a little bit of a, a roll out if it's, a, if it's been a bit much. Inhale to rise up into crescent lunge. We're gonna get off the wrists now. <laughs> Bending that back knee, get deep into the legs. And exhale, step forward and up as we have a kick out. I point the foot if you tighten the hamstrings. If you want more of a stretch through the hamstrings, you can flex it. Come back, breath in, lower down. Exhale, rise up, take it slow. You can bring the hands into the heart if you want or to in fists, whatever feels good for you. Inhale, reach up and lower. Exhale to come up and kick. Inhale. Exhale. Let's do two more. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Breath out, come up, last one. Step back and hold. Three, two, one. Open up, warrior two. Breath out. Straighten that front leg and step up to the top of your mat. So we're doing the other side. So we're going to raise the right foot up and then take it out to the side, drop it down, breath out, squat, hands to heart. Come back up, bring it in. Exhale over the back and curtsy down. Inhale to center, step out, breath out lower. Inhale, come back to center. Over the top, curtsy lunge. Inhale, let's do three more. Out, or two more, sorry. Breath in, come to center. Out, curtsy. Last one. Inhale, center. Lower down, breath out. Squat. Inhale, center. Last one, you're doing great. Curtsy, breath out. Inhale, step wide. Fold over the legs and take a big sigh. <sighs> well done. <laughs> also works on the brain. That's a lot of coordination for a yoga class. <laughs> now, if you would like to have your first two fingers around the big toe and elbows out to the side and pull yourself a little deeper, please do, to get you in to more into the backs of your legs. Last breath. Come up halfway. Place the right hand in the center of your face and open up to the left, coming into a twist. So twisting through the spine, thoracic spine. Inhale to center. So left hand to a fist underneath the face and open to the other side. Exhale, hand comes down. Bend through the knees, hands on the hips. Slowly come up with control. Turn your feet to face the front, come into lunge, breath in, and exhale, hands down, move through your flow, choosing your option, however feisty you're feeling today, <laughs> and we'll meet in downward facing dog. Look between the hands, step, jump, or walk between the hands, and we'll slowly start to rise up to standing. So we're going to move into a dancer pose, but we're going to do it a little different today to try and use the glutes. 
So we'll start with the right leg. So if you bend the knee and you grab the inside of the foot for dancer. Hang on, I'm watching Ross, what am I doing? Yeah, the inside of the foot, because you grab the outside. So <laughs> he's always like, you're telling the wrong side. <laughs> so from here, rather than pulling back, I'd like you to try to do it with your glutes first. So if you lift your left arm up and then almost grab your foot, but don't use your arm, kick back with your booty strength first. And then once you feel like you can't do any more with the glute, you can place your hand around the ankle and then start to tilt forward and use your arm as force to bring you into more of a back bend. But first you want to engage the glutes because they will help you get deeper into that dancer. The more that you kick away and roll that top shoulder back, the more of a back bend you'll come into. As we'll take a breath out, come back to centre. Place the foot down. We're going to do that again, but slightly differently. So with that one, we rolled the top shoulder open and came into a back bend. With this one, we're going to keep the hips even. So instead of twisting like this, we're going to keep the hips even to the floor and come down like this. So you're going to feel it more through the legs, through the back of the standing leg. So we'll do that right side again. So grab the inside of the foot or the ankle, left arm tall. And then as you tilt forward from the hip, the hips are staying even to the floor and belly button to floor, and then start to kick back. So this is a different stretch, and you'll feel quite different in this version. This is a, a Bikram version, <laughs> slightly different. But see how it feels and which one feels better. One more breath. They're both correct, they're just different versions. <laughs> and then exhale, slowly come back to center. Lower the leg and we'll do the left side. So shimmy out the legs, we'll do left side. So left hand on the inside of the foot, get nice and sturdy first, right hand tall. Now let go of the foot and try and take that leg back with just your glute strength. You might need to poke your butt to make sure it's working because sometimes it gets a little sleepy. <laughs> and once you feel you've taken it as far as you can with strength, you can bring your hand on the inside of the foot and then kick back, open that left shoulder, which will bring you into a back bend. So you might feel that in your back. If it doesn't feel nice, come out a little bit. Holding for one more breath. Beautiful. And exhale, coming out, bringing both the feet down, shimmering the feet. Maybe bring the hands to the heart for a second. Just connect to the breath for a moment. All right, let's do the other side. So same deal, but hips are even to the floor. So we're going to be working, it's almost like a standing split, this version, so it's more in the legs. So reaching behind you, reaching the right, the right hand up and left arm back. So tilting forward, keeping the hips even to the floor and belly button straight down. Kicking back, but you're feeling this stretch through your quad and through the back of the standing leg. So it's a hip stretch and not as much of a, as a, of a back bend. And just breathe and Observe how it feels. Maybe your body's fighting it or loving it. One more breath. And exhale, gently coming out. Hands to heart center. Reach tall, breath in. And exhale to fold. Inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, hands to floor. Step or jump back, high plank. And moving through your chaturanga, high to low. Breath in, up dog. And breath out, downward facing dog. We'll take a little cheeky dolphin to work into the shoulders. So bringing your knees down. With dolphin, if you haven't done one before, just watch the first one and then take part in the second one. So we're going to grab our elbows to make sure we're in the right spot interlace the hands and place them on the floor. You can also do dolphin with the palms flat down if your shoulders are very happy. Tuck the toes and start to straighten the legs. They're always a little bit bent and you can bend them as much as you need if your hamstrings are tight. Walk your feet in so you're taking more of the weight into your shoulders. Push into the floor so that your head is not touching the floor and stay as you are, beautiful. 
Now you're trying to squeeze those elbows in together without letting them go too wide because that'll protect the shoulder from damage of them sliding out too far. Just makes it a little friendly on your shoulder. If you want more, you can lift one leg up. So you're putting more of that weight over the shoulders. Chin to chest, look between the feet. Keep that slow, steady breath. If you raise one leg up, lower it down and raise the other. At any point, if it's too much, please come out into child's pose. Keep that breathing steady. And breath out, lower the leg. Knees to floor, child's pose, take a break. Let the body sink down into the floor. Sometimes it's nice after a really intense pose to take a moment to just release. Slide your hands forward and gently push up downward facing dog. Look between your hands and bring your knees down between your hands. We're going into a wide leg fold forward on the floor. So you might need to shimmy yourself a little bit with your mates, your neighbors. <laughs> but going into the center of your mat so you have some of your towel in front of you is a good idea, depending on how far you fold forward. <laughs> so with me, I like to move my pelvis a little bit, my glutes out of the way. You may even want to move your quads out of the way a little bit because sometimes they're in the way of your hips. And then when you're feeling ready, you can start to fold a little bit. Some of you will go further than others. And that's okay. Wherever your edge is, just bring your chin to your chest and try to relax. And try wiggling the toes a little bit if they feel, if your body feels quite tight. Inhale to come up halfway and walk the hands a little further out, seeing if you can shimmy the hips forward for an anterior tilt a little more, which means the, the, the hips are pointing forward towards your toes, which makes it a little easier to fold. Coming into a side bend, so walking the hands over towards the right hand side, and maybe you can reach the left arm over the head and just place the right hand on the inside of the right leg. If that doesn't feel good, you can bring that left hand over and point it towards the floor and just feel a neck release through the side of the neck. You might be flexible enough to reach that top hand over to grab the foot and come into a little bit of a bind if you're quite flexy. Just see where you're at today. Again, let that neck and head be soft, release the jaw. Maybe you're closing the eyes and focusing on the breath. Finding a sense of softness here. Use that right hand to push into the floor to slowly come up. Be gentle on the neck, maybe your hand helps your head up. Let's go side bend to the left. So left hand goes on the inside of the leg. Maybe you can slide it along. Reach the right hand up and over and tilt over to the side. There's always one side that's better. For me, it's this side, so it feels easier. <laughs> if you're quite flexy, you might be able to grab onto the foot and come into a twist. Otherwise, you can actually use that left hand to hold your neck if it's too much. Stay for another two breaths. Last breath, use that left hand on the floor to push yourself up. Maybe even use the hand on the cheek to bring your head back to center. Bend through the right knee. We're coming into half pigeon. So you're going to shimmel around to the front and, and come onto your hips. It's beautiful, into half pigeon. So if you're quite flexible, you might better have that foot flexed at the front, but most of us will have that foot pointed and a little bit more bent so that we're, our hips are pointed evenly towards the top of the mat. And then you can start to walk your hands down. 
Maybe relax your head on the floor. And this is where that self-observation really comes into play. Especially when there's a bird on the roof. <laughs> in tap shoes, yeah. <laughs> a crow in tap shoes. <laughs> but see if there's maybe an itch or something that you want to move to get rid of and see if you can breathe through that. So being comfortable with the uncomfortable. And sometimes you find that you don't need to move at all. You just sink into that space of acceptance. And it goes away. With every breath out, see if you can relax a little more. Maybe the jaw. Maybe the shoulders. Just observe what's coming up in the mind. Not entertaining the thoughts, but just observing them. Slowly, when you're ready, start to come up onto your elbows and onto your hands. You'll bend that back knee, bring it in, and we're gonna do a little funky twist to go to the other side. So you're gonna bring the, bo the bottoms of your feet to the, cent to the floor, and then you're gonna to go to the other side. So we're going into pigeon on the other side. So you're gonna be probably facing the opposite way. <laughs> and st send your back leg back, coming into half pigeon on the left. And being just mindful of your knee, if you have a knee injury, please do let me know and I can give you an alternative. A figure four on your back is a great option. If some of you are not feeling this, please also let me know. You can, there's ways you can deepen the pose as well. With every breath out, imagine yourself sinking a little more. And observing if you like this pose or if maybe you resist this pose. Couple more breaths here. So if you would like to deepen your experience, you can untuck the back toe and move the back leg a little further back and maybe fold a little more. Taking one last breath where you are. And we'll slowly come up onto our hands, untuck the leg, come into a downward facing dog, and you'll be facing the wrong way, but that's okay. <laughs> Keep pedaling. <laughs> I can see you all, hey. <laughs> then you can bring your knees down between your hands and turn around to face me. <laughs> and we'll come down onto our bums. 
feet onto the floor and we'll slowly come down to the floor. So open the chest, nice and proud and open, so we're not hunching forward. The back is relatively open. And then start to tilt your tailbone so you can slowly come down, engage through the core. Keep the chest open, keep smiling. Try to keep the feet on the floor, maybe they lift a little bit. Come down slow, all the way to the floor. Bring the feet in, tickle the backs of the heels and windscreen wipe the legs from side to side. Coming into a back bend of your choice, today I'll be working on bridge and bridge leg lifts, but if you want to come into wheel, please do. Um, you'll have two opportunities in your back bends today. So the first one is normal bridge. So we're going to lift the hips up towards the roof and tilt the tailbone, squeeze the glutes. Interlace hands behind you, roll the shoulders under the body. Push into the heels and drag the heels towards you to engage through the hamstrings. Imagine, imagine there's a block between your thighs, like you're squeezing them together so the thighs are engaged. A strong back bend. Taking a few breaths. One more wherever you are. And then releasing the hands, coming back, upper back, middle back, and lower back. And windscreen wipe the legs from side to side slowly, twisting into the spine. So the next back bend will be a little longer. I'm going to be doing leg raises. If you have any back issues or are not comfortable doing leg raises, please just repeat the same bridge we've just done. If you want to come into wheel, also an option. Also an option to do leg raises in wheel. So tickle the backs of the heels, prepare, and exhale to come up. Interlace hands behind you, roll shoulders under, walk the right foot into the center of the mat, and exhale, bring the left knee in towards the body and point in the foot. So from here, we're really activating through that right side to stabilize. Keep the breath. One more as you are. Bend the knee, lower the left foot. Place the left foot into the center and we'll do the other side. So exhale the right knee in towards the chest and then point through the foot. If you really want to, you can flex through the foot. You'll just feel more through the hamstring. So it's up to you. You can have a little play what feels better. <laughs> Keep strong through that left side. Glutes are working, strong pose. Exhale, knee towards chest, lower the leg down, release the hands and come down, upper back, middle back and lower back. Bring the knees together and let them fall to one side. Inhale to center and exhale to the other side. An inversion of your choice, so there is a choice of shoulder stand or if you're working on anything such as pincher or headstand, handstand, you're welcome to do it now. So shoulder stand, we bring the feet up like into a tripod and we squeeze the legs together. Maybe there's a plow pose where you flex the feet and they come over behind the back of your head. Maybe they rest on the floor. Or if they don't, maybe bend the knees and bring the knees in towards the face. And gently coming out, so placing the hands behind you like brakes, using them push against the floor, control the core coming down. Fish pose, counter to your inversion. So bringing your hands underneath the glutes, rolling the chest open. And coming into your fish when you're ready. Letting the head fall back, pointing through the toes. 
allowing the head to fall opposite position. When you're done, if you'd like to come out, you look towards your feet, straighten your arms and come down. Taking a happy baby or a supine twist is a great option. Let's do a supine twist together if you like. So bring the right knee in and then taking it over the top of the body to twist into the back. Inhale to center and exhale to the other side. Giving that back the opportunity to twist and neutralize after all of those back bends. <laughs> when you're ready, come back to center and we'll take our final Shavasana. Taking a big breath in together and a big breath out through the nose. One more, just the same breath in and maybe sigh it out. Bringing your awareness back to your body. And take this moment to study yourself. Swadaya, which is in Sanskrit, self-study.
darkness has incredible power when we can observe ourselves and our own mind. Because not everything that goes through our mind is the truth. And sometimes we need to remember who we are and come back to the heart. When you're ready, you can start to wiggle your fingers and toes. Maybe reach your hands up over your head and stretch from tips of fingers to bottoms of toes. When you're ready, bringing your knees in towards your chest and giving yourself a hug. Really savouring this moment of where your body and mind is at. When you're ready, rolling onto your favourite side, maybe using the, your bottom arm as a pillow. And then gently help yourself up to a comfortable seated position, keeping your eyes closed and chin towards chest. Maybe if it feels right for you, bringing your hands to your heart. And we'll just observe for a moment what we've created in ourselves, this space. And trying to hold on to this, bottle this for the rest of the evening. Namaste. Thank you for the lovely energy and I hope you enjoyed the class. And try and take this out into your evening. Share it with the people you live with. Be kind, <laughs> be nice, smile, you know. <laughs> Have a great night, guys. <laughs>